Hey, so we're back. So for this particular vlog, we are going to talk about uh, Dr. Rob's. Um, this is really specialization. So when you are a graduate of PhD, this is his masterpiece. No? <laughs> so he uh, specialized uh, in this particular field. No? Uh, this is translanguaging. So. I have a, an idea, but I would want uh, the expert to talk about uh, uh -huh. <laughs> his dissertation. So, okay. sorry, what's, what's trans language? Okay, um, there's the thing. Um, trans languaging, I think if you want to understand it, code switching may be the closest thing to you. you know? like mm -hmm. Where you have, in an utterance, mm -hmm. you have a mixing of features of mm -hmm. other languages. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, so the basic question usually would ask, so what's the difference between translanguaging and code switching? Um, uh, you will be, of course, elucidated more if you read, for example, Ophelia Garcia's work. Because okay. my work is really heavily influenced by her work. And of course, Kanagaraja is another. Uh, but basically... What's this? Admo? Admo? Uh, no, these are... Uh, Ophelia Garcia is from... If I'm not mistaken, from the Columbia University, she's connected with Columbia University, and Kanagaraja is uh, in the States, I don't know, somewhere in the States, one of the top universities in the States. So, translanguaging is li not limited to code switching, it's not limited. Okay. Yeah, so, um, the view about translanguaging is that it's an encompassing uh, language practice of bilinguals and multilinguals. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, that means other practices such as uh, borrowing, even translating, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the natural language practices of multilinguals and bilinguals, they're all under the umbrella. I mean, on a personal, uh, mm -hmm. my personal take on that, under the umbrella of translanguaging. Okay, so the method. So it made use of grade 3 because of the mother tongue education, yes, right? Yes. So it's required with this level, grade uh -huh. 3. How, yeah. Uh, yeah, so how did you gather the data? Uh, What's the procedure? Actually, my... Uh, it is... Um, uh, how would I say? Translanguaging at the beginning was... It was not intended really... The study was not really intended to look at translanguaging. But I was looking at how, in relation to the MTBML policy, how the use of Chabacano is used in the teaching of English. But it is there, in, I mean, through my initial reading as well for my literature review, that when you ask question of how, how, how do they use mother tongue in learning another language, so this is where you see the, the common pattern, in which is the mixing. And okay. so... That's one, uh, that's one, one aspect yeah, of the it. Mixing. So, and true enough, when I observed the uh, grade 3 classes during English uh, classes, during the discussion and in, in carrying out their communicative tasks mm -hmm. in the classroom, in the English uh, classroom, they translanguage. You know? they, use, okay. uh, they use not just one language, they access the different linguistic uh, resources that they have. Mm -hmm. So they don't just use, for example, mother tongue, for example. Mm -hmm. Because when you say mother tongue, if I'm a Chabacano speaker, I would only use Chabacano. But you'll be surprised that even a Chabacano speaker, children, right? Because they're multilingual. Uh, they're not, they're individually multilingual. Mm -hmm. So you would see even a Chabacano speaker would mix his or her utterance with other languages that he's exposed to, like Tagalog, which is taught, so even Cebuano that are... So you captured out. it. So uh -huh. meaning to say, it's not only Chabacano, but uh -huh. other languages that he's using for learning. Yeah, basically, yeah, that's the whole idea. No? So, mm -hmm. like, we maximize our linguistic resources in... Uh, understanding no? and eventually uh, understanding how to learn another language and how to eventually uh, use the language, right? Okay. Now, I understand that um, translanguaging... Uh... Good afternoon again. So at this point, let me ask, since uh, translanguaging will encompass linguistic features, right? So practice. practice, I'm sorry, practice. practices. So how do you distinguish one from the other? For example, there's a thin line eh, called okay. mixing with borrowing okay. or borrowing with translation. So what's the basis? So basically, um, there are, uh, I mean, there's literature for each of the same basic practices. You know? So you have, for example, code switching, uh, there's a literature for that. 
But in general, what do we know about those regions? Basically, there's the idea of primary language, the secondary language, right? So, for example, in English, you speak English and then we use, we use the English structure and then suddenly uh, we don't know a certain vocabulary and so we, we resort to using a, a vocabulary from another language. So, in that view, uh, the other language is seen as rather inferior. I mean, and, and from the perspective as well of the others looking at the speaker is that is that inadequacy from the part of the speaker. But in terms of languages, we don't have that kind of notion. All languages are equal, and uh, if a person, for example, exhibits a uh, false switching, it's really just part of it's inherent to be switching from one language to another. For because purposes this, of for purposes of learning. Yeah, this because this uh, all resources uh, they're just there. You no, know? but uh, when you go to the classroom. Of course, uh, I, but of course we have to uh, clarify here, you know, the context. Mm -hmm. So we understand that there are contexts that code switching may not be an appropriate practice. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yes. So, yes. Like when you do paper presentations yes. and you want to use just English because mm -hmm. it's pointless to be switching to your own mother tongue when your mm -hmm. audience does not understand that. Right? Precisely, yeah. we are using grade three exactly. learners yeah, because no? we want to understand how is this. You know? mm -hmm. But um. Uh, uh, even with code switching, then you no, know, we already started to look at code switching as a as a helpful practice. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what we have to re remind ourselves is that who should do uh, who should do translanguaging more in the classroom, okay. and when do we use translanguaging more? Mm -hmm. uh, so in the classroom, preferably, it's the students. Uh, so it's like we allow students to translanguage because that's part of their learning process. Okay. But on the teacher's end, we, the teacher teacher will only use trans language only when she or he finds the need to do so. Okay. So when she or he, if she notices the students do not understand, mm. and so that's when the teacher can trans language or code switch. In your okay. study, you did not observe teachers? I, I included the teachers, okay, so. and because it's greatly, it was really observable. Teachers also are trans languaging because again, mm. when I interviewed them, they said they do that, especially if they notice their students don't seem to understand them. So right. there is pedagogical explanation to that practice. No? Okay. So they do that because they want the students to understand, they want the students to learn. So, but um, but I think the other concern is that if they do that in the classroom, will the students be able to learn English and be able to produce English completely? Mm -hmm. So, so far, based on, on a result, I would say not entirely. It does not impede them to learn how to communicate, communicate using only English. Yeah. Because there, there was this activity during the, one of the observations when students were asked to produce um, uh, alternative questions where you have uh, two parts of the question, okay. right? But yeah, so the teacher did not specify what language to use, okay? okay. So you would. So eventually, you will see students having outputs that are in different languages, and you would see their translanguaging in the work. Like you have one question with Chabacano and Tagalog, Tagalog and English, Cebuano and Chabacano. So all these signs exact. But the teachers, uh, when I asked, so how do you grade this? They said, uh, for now, we're just concerned about whether they understood the concept. Okay. But I also noticed, however, there are there were some students who were able able to produce this kind of questions in com completely in English. Right. So if the if they're part of a, an environment where translanguaging is used, mm -hmm. you would see that this did not actually affect the way they will use English if, if you just you know ask them to do it. They can they actually can. eventually use English. But it's so, it's just inherent as you yeah, using it's just, it's just yeah, like yeah. coming out. Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, wait and, sir uh, wait. Okay. So we are talking about the research local is in Sambanga, in Sambanga City. City. Where particular? Um I can't say what particular I'm sorry, school, so I'm sorry. It's a public <laughs> elementary school. <laughs> My bad. And it's okay. It's a public <laughs> elementary school and it's multilingual because it was a criteria. Okay. So the school should have at least students with different languages. So that's the criteria. That's a criteria. That's a criteria. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens in a multilingual classroom and especially in the teaching of English. Mm -hmm. So so, so it's not only limited to Chabacano. Yeah, it's not limited that's to That's why Chabacano is not in your title. 
Well, it, it was there not. at the beginning, but uh, it was eventually, not. Uh, but in the in the article, it's not anymore. It's not it anymore. Just, just mm-hmm. Okay, now. Uh, so wait for a while, sir. In your dissertation. Okay. Well, a, a while ago, the criteria is multilingualism. So, okay. not only Sabacano, but okay. other first language. So, native yeah. language like uh, Cebuano, yeah. Tausu. Because it's a reality in Zamboanga City. Okay, right? now. So, so why, why is it you included Sabacano in the dissertation? Because it's a policy. Yeah, I mean, the focus uh, was on understanding how the policy is implemented in, in terms of in, in the classroom. You know, how is it trickled down in the classroom? Do teachers strictly follow the policy whether it's called, you know, use Chabacano, you know? But, yeah, but uh, I wanted to see how it's being done there. Because basically, it was a, a descriptive uh, case study, you know? So that means to say the data is really authentic. You yeah, didn't, you didn't just manipulate the data yeah, just like, uh, okay, I will just observe, you know, but in reality, it's not really happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, that's no, the no. strength. No? What I did is... Yeah, that's because, a contribution. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. because it's a case study. I just went there. I just wanted to, to see how a multilingual classroom, uh, uh, how it looks like, no? So, okay. uh, the multilingual classroom in Zambonga. The duration, data um, gathering. Basically, okay. I spent uh, around... Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. So yeah. that is, uh, you, you sat there yeah. for how many hours, right? Yeah, same yeah. class, same class, group. Yeah. I actually observed two classes. Two classes so it was every not, day. Yeah, every it was day. not meant to compare, but just to see um, how, you know, like how, because if it's just one class, you only have a picture of one class. All right. right? Yeah, yeah. But if you have at least two classes, you, you get a more, you know, no one's uh, picture of, of what's happening. The entire class. So we're talking about the entire yeah, class so, doing the yeah, trans language. Yeah, because um, uh, yeah, this is elementary, and they have only one teacher for all subject areas, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. the teacher was included in the process. Yeah, teacher and students. The practices of teachers and students. Okay, so you get into their lessons. Yes, I observed. Did you suggest process. anything, or no, they nothing. they did everything? Nothing. You just observed. Yeah, I okay. just asked. Then they will allow me to no activities, it's no there, stimuli. So okay, it, it's all there. So I, I, I just went there and document. Uh, but uh, I made sure that I the each observation is complete. Okay. So I get to see from the beginning. Of the so this is a published article. So what journals are this yeah. one? The article version, uh, I have to say that it's just like a, a chapter of, of my okay, chapter. So of my much has to be but published. But I think uh, that's basically, the, I would like to say that's the salient, the most important part perhaps of, of, my, of my dissertation. Dissertation. So it was recently published in the International Journal of Multilingualism uh, uh, because I think that's a perfect Journal because it's about multilingualism. So, international journal multilingual. So, for my viewers who are listening to this, uh, yes, is is a I'm I'm very proud (laughs) to introduce him in my blog because he he represents Sambuanga. So, few people would appreciate what we are doing. So, uh, of course, I would like to say that uh, Dr. Rob is in fact uh, motivating us. We are. We are in the academe, and few of us would write, you know, the process, the rigorous process of writing. But when someone would publish, I welcome that. I mean, instead of having that envious feeling, no, we are happy because someone succeeded, and for that, then we are pushed with the idea of uh, moving forward, right? So, write, keep on writing. That's true. Despite the rejection. Uh, yeah, I, 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 if I should talk about it, I, I faced several rejections. Corrections but I think it was and all. It was through the rejections that I was able Learning. to improve the work. Yeah. So I think if you just, uh, if you will be open to uh, suggestions and corrections, then you will be able to, you know, make a work much, much better. And if I may, not to brag, but I think partly because of that and my other work, Mm. So I was also asked uh, to review uh, mm. journal articles for language and education. Mm. It was on it was on something on trans language as well, 
because of this and dissertation. These two journals, actually, these two journals actually rejected me, you know. No, see, but um, see, they mm -hmm. after they probably saw my publication, mm -hmm. so they um, asked me to review uh, some of the journals, uh, some of the articles that I uh, to be published in the see? journal. So you so, never know. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was just that. No, but I think the whole experience. Really nothing is really, personal, really no. Yeah, nothing yeah. is personal in this. Really, really in this area no so you keep on publishing they saw that you publish in this journal so they see your worth already exactly, exactly. okay so your prospects for Sabacana. so we have uh, a project that's a big project but uh, we are just yeah, <laughs> that's why i'm visiting um yeah prospects prospect, so hoping that uh, we would find yeah there's that pressure to continue to do research and then eventually publish. But so, are we into lexicography already? Uh, some, um, some, uh, we have to standardize, right? So we right. need to standardize. We need to let experts consider our dictionary, not uh -huh. as glossary, because yeah. I'm not. Am I right? So no dictionary. Yet. I mean, there it's are been, dictionaries. I mean, per se, but um, I don't know how you would take. Prescribed that. by experts. Uh -huh. When you submit these works uh, uh -huh. to experts, they just categorize uh -huh. this to glossary. But like, I think I would say there is still much work to be done. Okay? okay. So while there are these existing dictionaries, we can continue on uh, harnessing because I think it has never exhausted what's there in our language. No? Do so, you subscribe for geographical samples? Um. Because there will be variations, of course, and you would, it would be depend on how you would consider this later on. But I think it would be good to, to look samples. at this, to look at the, the variations of, of the language and how this parrot or, or how close they are to one another. Okay. So that would keep be, on writing. Yeah, we have to keep be, on writing. Yeah. That would be a Anything, anything about Sabahana. Not only lexicography. Yeah, anything about Sabahana. And of course, the about. literature. The literature. Yeah, Keep on writing yeah. about. Yeah. So, even I, I would say, like, I, I cannot be content with the translation. I mean, that's just the beginning. You know? So, I should be able to write really original works in Sabahana. Of course. You know? so, beyond. So, so far, I only have that short story that I want. Yes. And I don't even have a copy of it. So, I will have to go back to So, that, that is published by Ateneo, the uh -huh. short story. No, because it was funded. Mm -hmm. So, it was part of the corpus. So, <laughs> so, they so you, cannot it. you cannot claim it. cannot claim it. So, oh it's part God. of that project. So, you don't know the publication yet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so because it's, it's a contest. Yeah, yeah, it's a contest. Okay. Now, uh, the viewership of this blog mm -hmm. would include the uh, teachers, uh, okay. graduate students, so maybe final message uh, since Sir would still have a class. Huh? <laughs> so. Yeah, um, my message is that I think if I did as well, so in the beginning I wasn't really into writing, I wasn't into really research, but I think my graduate studies, especially when I went to my it's there where I was able to you know, develop more, you know, mm -hmm. my ability to write. But I think by and large, there, what, it, what I was taught is that to read, mm -hmm. read as much as you can, and then write, mm -hmm. and then don't be afraid for others to see your work and criticize your work, mm -hmm. and then learn from their from their criticisms, from their suggestions, uh, recommendations. Because uh, when you write. I mean, and if you want to succeed, you don't just write for yourself. You know? So <laughs> you don't satisfy yourself. You know? So, it's so the ego, sir. Yeah, no, you have yeah. to lessen so, the ego. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so it's something that, yeah, that, and you will only get to understand uh, audience when you listen to their suggestions. Mm. You know? So and I think um, there, I, I would, I would say that's a, that's a healthy experience. And if they have something, don't be scared to publish it. Okay. I mean, you know, so only through publishing it. If there, and the other, and the other, there are lots of the, lots of platforms that their work can be, you know, accessed mm -hmm. and for others can see their work. Now, I would cite an instance, for example, ResearchGate. 
Yeah, research yeah, research gate. Uh, research gate. So if you have a research work published in your school and when it's published in school, sell down that it gets to be you know circulated outside the yeah, school. Mm -hmm. So if you have the permission, have it published, for example, in research mm -hmm. gate because there people outside your school can get to learn about it. You know? So Research yeah, gate. yeah. So I think that's one way also. Um, is it peer reviewed also? Not no, no. The research gate is just a platform for so you can publish for your published work to be ah to be, yeah 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 uh, shared. Yeah. So I have this um I have this article I submitted to uh, USD the uh, so Asian you shared Journal, it Asian then. Journal of English Language Studies Agiles. I think it's okay. <laughs> it's been there. I have, I think they they know. It's I think the, in the contract. You have to pass certain number of months, correct? Uh, there's, there's the, all that, but, but not for the work in, in uh, uh, IJM. But oh. for Agiles, I think by now it just should be okay, and I think that they welcome such things. It has been there, and not to brag, so I think it's also through that that my work uh, on the music landscape was noticed, and so I was asked also to review uh, a, a, an article on the music landscape. So I think. Yeah, that's that's how people will get to know on your project. So the one in Asia, so that's linguistic class. Linguistic class. Yeah. Yeah. The the yeah. billboards uh, uh, and all. Uh, 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 in Manila. In, in Manila. Okay, yeah. so that's linguistic class. Yeah, There's yeah. one PhD now doing the research on landscape. So I think I will have to suggest your. your, your sure, 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 sure. Huh? I I think I'm also comfortable with linguistic landscape. Yeah. So, you are. Yeah. Sir, so how do you balance a teaching and teaching in? So we are about to end this vlog, so wait for a while. So teaching, how do you how do you balance teaching and research? It's not easy, right? Uh, yeah, that's a thing now because if you have a lot of um, courses to teach, that, that, that takes so much of your time for research. But um, I think um, plus admin. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And it has to be like a personal, you know. So it should be, you know, you have to be internally motivated to do research. Mm. So and of course, research takes a lot of work. So you have to start uh, in small bits of pieces and then to eventually put them all together. And, you know, yeah. But research. sometimes you do travel, right? I see you in yeah, Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you have to <laughs> enjoy also life. Balance, uh, also have to balance because if you have to just focus on uh, you get. So shout out to Sir Archie. Yeah. Archie. Archie. Oh. Hello. <laughs> okay, okay, so four o'clock you have class or yeah, so yeah. you're it's late. Okay, it's okay. So, so maybe I'll okay. just take a picture while you are teaching. But not in, we will not include the students. Only you oh, okay. in front. Um is it a teacher? Because right now like What do you have now? Besides okay, so like we're just supposed to check on each other because this is the makeup class and then we oh. just wanted to make sure that um, they're on track with their requirements because uh, no problem so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just a picture that you are okay, uh, sure, in sure. action yeah, so I sir like thank you for gracing this yeah, uh, okay. this will uh, again uh, once published this one is taken as a, a source uh -huh. right so okay. I think we did done justice <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> everything right so the things that we were sharing I think uh -huh. everything is in order so in terms of Paper, so. But I think uh, it's, it's maybe we can say that if they want some clarifications from me after they watch, yes, I, I can I can respond to questions. Yes. So I, I can clarify because you know this is like, taken at this moment, so yeah. there are things that I might not have been able to explain. So, so to further, to yeah, further explain further, that yeah, trans so language. Have, have further questions. Or translation. I would like, I would like to so sorry, thank you, gracias. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.